Ladies and gentlemen, Premier League predictions, game week 21. I do have to start with a little bit of an apology. James and I were on a bit of a streak, 19 game weeks in a row. We were very proud of that with holidays and new jobs and all sorts of other distractions that we've got going on. We're very proud of our 19 game week streak of our predictions, but we did let the side down for game week 20. So very sorry to have missed that. We still tracked it. We still had the points, but there was just no video for you guys. So, so apologies, apologies on that. But we do have game week 21. Unfortunately, I do think, I think this might be the third time this season it is just going to be me so apologies about that James uh, is is very very busy at the moment has a lot of stuff uh, a lot of stuff going on so we won't be seeing him unfortunately but let's get you up to speed with game week 19 game week 20 and how we did before I get started I believe after recently just checking we're seven subscribers off a thousand so if you are um, watching and you're not subscribed and you do like what you see hit the subscribe button it would mean a hell of a lot to, to me and James the kind of 1,000 subscribers has been a real target of ours uh, over the last year or so. Um, but game week 19, let's take a look. Six points for me, five points for James. I'll be honest with you, I did not cover myself in glory a great deal. I only managed to get four correct results out of 10, which is not good. But luckily, two of those four, I got the correct score, which gave me the extra points. Um, in terms of kind of standout results, uh, Brentford are not playing good football at the moment, but Wolves putting four past them seemed like a pretty big deal. Brighton 4-2 against Spurs was a pretty big deal. Newcastle really not playing well at the moment, uh, or at least recently. Uh, Forest putting three past them, winning that one 3-1. Bournemouth Fulham as well, winning 3-0 th winning was very, very big, but gain a point on James there. Moving along to game week 20. Um, a little bit of a damp squib, West Ham Brighton. I was really looking forward to that game, but but nil nil was was a bit of a shame there. Chelsea managed to pull out a victory uh, at Kenilworth Road against uh, Luton Town. Brentford not playing very well. Palace being able to to, to beat them. Wolves another impressive uh, performance three nil, and again. Bournemouth as well. I'm just trying to find them here um, against uh, Spurs. Obviously, let the side down a little bit, but obviously a team playing very, very well. As you can see, James managed to get the correct score on the Spurs-Bournemouth game. I managed to get six out of ten results correct, so I got six. We're tied up for that one. So we will take a quick look at the overall scores at the moment. 116 for me, 114 for James. Still very, very close. But the reason why you're here, the reason why you're watching this video is we need to get on to the game week 21 predictions after a little bit of a hiatus. So let's get into it. Chelsea versus Fulham. This actually isn't the first game when I wrote this out. I believe it's Burnley Luton on Friday night, but we'll just go with, with this order. Um, Chelsea Fulham. Um, Chelsea historically have dominated this fixture, absolutely dominated this fixture. Um, you can see, I think, the sentiment towards Chelsea at the moment, and also, generally speaking, the sentiment towards Fulham as well. Um, Fulham are, you know, playing half decent football right now and, you know, being able to put up some goals. And again, it's something I've been repeating over the course of the year. I really like where this team are at, especially with their mindset, uh, where Marco Silva has got this team, um, got this team playing. Um, Chelsea, again, difficulty is. Where are these? Where and when are these young kids going to start developing and, and being better? Um, it's very easy to have the shield if you're Maurizio Pochettino. If it's a process, it's a change, it's a this, it's a that. But similarly to I think what we saw with Mikel Arteta in the first couple of years while he was at Arsenal, you could still see like some slight grains of what was going to potentially be or at least seeds let's say as an analogy of what this Arsenal team was going to be and it was a team that nearly won the league last year a team that is supposedly you know in a title challenge this year I don't know if we're seeing that yet with Maurizio Pochettino Nkunku came back made an immediate impact is injured again are they going to have to do some more stuff in the transfer market you know reliance on somebody like Thiago Silva with his age are the defenders going to step up I just think it's difficult for Chelsea right now and Fulham you know Raul Jimenez another lease of life Willian's playing some nice football Jao Palinha you know <laughs> potentially based on reputation is probably a top five top ten uh, number six in world football right now wanted by the likes of Bayern Munich and all, all the big Premier League teams so I think we're finally reaching a point where actually Chelsea Fulham should be and will be actually quite a competitive game. I'm not going to go whole hog purely. If it was at Craven Cottage, I would have Fulham winning this game. No questions asked, but I'm just going to go with the draw. I know the draws are always risky, but I just have a feeling that Fulham will pose a threat. Chelsea will pose a threat. Chelsea are at home. Fulham, generally speaking, probably the better team at the moment as well. But that home factor, I just think Chelsea will be, will be capable. Maybe 
some magic from Cole Palmer or something like that, and then maybe Fulham get lucky off a set piece. James has gone a little further along there, and I think he thinks that this Fulham team will be able to put this uh, Chelsea team to bed. Um, moving on, Newcastle versus Manchester City. Also, excuse me if I occasionally look down um, uh, at my other screen here. I have kind of the form table over the last six games, just because I think it's very interesting to see where a team is at. The reason I use that as a segue, we do have Newcastle versus Manchester City. Newcastle, bottom of the form table over the last six games, bottom 20th. Um, even though they're at home, I know they're better at home. Man City getting a little bit fitter. Will we see Kevin De Bruyne? Will we see Erling Haaland? These are the two biggest game changers in our league at the moment, apart from maybe if you throw somebody like a Mo Salah in there as well. Um, Guys, Kevin De Bruyne back is, is a game changer. And, and the, the prediction, I think, of Manchester City having this 12-13 game win streak coming up is probably going to coincide with the best player in the league being back, that being Kevin De Bruyne. So I've got it a little bit closer. I still think Manchester City are a little bit off the off the pace, just generally speaking, seventh in the form table, which is very unlike them. Newcastle, though, a little bit of a dumpster fire. I think they're getting a bit more healthy as well, but I think the City team will have too much. A little stronger from James with the 3-1 prediction for him. Everton Villa, I found this one very, very, very difficult to call. Um, Everton are playing some really nice football. Um, again, eighth in the, in the form table, picking up some results here. But guys, this Aston Villa team, I said this to James, recently in a video I, I don't know where the weakness is in this team right now they they seem to kind of have depth across the board they've got quality in depth as well there's a style of play and I think as a foundation you have a coach like Unai Emery which means you're going to be in a lot of games um, as much as you might look at potentially oh if they kind of overextend an attack maybe they'll get you know somebody will score a bunch of goals against them I'm not really seeing that and with some of the couple of the injuries they've had, I know I know Tyrone Mings went out and I kind of thought, oh my goodness. But with somebody like maybe a Diego Carlos and obviously the way Pau Torres has come in, it's a completely different looking team than you'd have expected. Um, somebody like Nicola Zaniolo off the bench, again, has a bit of an X factor and a bit of something. Leon Bailey, unbelievable professional. Ollie Watkins has been really hot this year. I just... I think this Villa team have it all. <laughs> I know I know that sounds a bit ridiculous, but in terms of a title challenge... I can't give you any theoretical um, knowledge that would suggest that this Villa team can't go further. I don't know where you're poking holes in them. Um, general quality, if you compare Ollie Watkins to Erling Haaland or somebody like, I don't know, Douglas Luiz to Kevin De Bruyne or, um, you know, if, if you're comparing the wingers to somebody like Bernardo Silva or Grealish or Doku or something, okay, maybe you can do the quality comparison. But generally speaking, I don't see any issues with this Villa team, and I think they're just going to keep marching on. Uh, I know Everton have got a point to prove, especially with that with that points deduction over their head, which is why I'd assume James has got it more of a draw. I just think this Villa team have enough to beat anybody, um, and I think an away trip even to Goodison Park is going to be easy enough for them. So I'm going 2-1 on that one. Um, Manchester United Tottenham certainly kind of game of the week territory it doesn't look like a massively strong slate of games to be fair so I'd say probably game of the week at Old Trafford Manchester United versus Tottenham James with 2-2 two, two, me with 3-2 um, guys one thing I will say about the way this Manchester United team are playing at the moment is um, if they want to do counter-attack direct you know, football, absorbing a bit of pressure and then going out and kind of trying to blow past you, um, I think Manchester United are really, really well built for that. And if you're going to play a high line and you're going to try and play a bit more of a territory game, Rashford, Garnacho, Rasmus Hoyland, these kinds of guys, these are quick football players. Um, Ahmad Diallo, I believe, potentially in the fold as well. These are all very, very fast players on the break at Old Trafford on the break. I think Spurs are potentially playing into their hands with this. No Son, looks like no James Madison as well. I'm trying to think, I think they're missing, I don't want to misquote here, but they're missing a couple of players at the African Cup of Nations as well. I think this is a slightly weaker Spurs side coming to Old Trafford. They're probably still going to try and play the same way. Richarlison obviously has a bit about him at the moment and he may cause some trouble for this Manchester United team. But I think Manchester United might be licking their chops a little bit here thinking we can actually potentially put up some goals and really do something here. I still don't have any faith in Manchester United. So they're still going to concede a couple goals. But I think the way Tottenham play 
plays perfectly into the hands of this Manchester United team to potentially go out and score a bunch of goals. James seemingly has a similar kind of opinion. And I would say that, again, it's the loss of Son, no Madison. A lot of their better players unavailable. That's that's kind of tricky for, for, for Spurs, maybe to go to Old Trafford, a desperate Manchester United team, and pull off the victory. Um, Burnley versus Luton. Let's take a look here. This, I believe, is the uh, is the five, uh, the Friday game. Um, James and I have both got Burnley taking this. And what I'll, I'll be honest with you, what I think is going to happen here is we're going to kind of have a little bit of a flashback to a championship game. Um, and what do we know about the championship from last season? Well, it was Burnley's championship. Nobody could touch Burnley. And I wonder if Burnley are going to know the quality of opponent they're against, and then they can actually impose the play style that they had from the championship from last year that made them so successful and got them promotion. That's what I can see. I don't think it's going to be, you know, clear cut, 3-0, 2-0 type victory, but 1-0, I think Burnley can get kind of lucky and again especially being at home play maybe the way that they did last year um, against a side that they would have faced last year who who um, from memory only made it in through through the playoffs so I'm going with 1-0 one, one James again I would imagine a similar kind of thought process but 2-1 with Luton getting getting a goal in there as well bit of a throwback game to uh, to last year with those two promoted teams um Arsenal Palace, really, really interesting game. Very tricky game. Again, Palace are not a team I like doing these predictions on. I find it really, really difficult. And especially with the way Arsenal have played of late, kind of worrying. I won't lie to you. Um, what I would say as it relates to Arsenal, Arsenal 12th in the form table. Luckily, they're at home and luckily they're a team that is 16th in the form table, playing even worse in current form at the moment than they are. Um, I think this will be a little bit of a get back to basics kind of game uh, for, for, uh, for Arsenal and for Mikel Arteta. They need to start just putting these wins back together. Um, the Christmas period was appalling for them, really, really bad. Uh, the advantage or potential advantage they could have made from, from the Manchester City team not playing brilliantly, they've not taken, which Liverpool have um and i just think a home victory against crystal palace london derby again is just something they need two nil for me i think it relatively convincing maybe a goal you know end of the first half and then one maybe 60 minutes or so palace having opportunities but nothing too clear cut for them to for them to actually you know make anything clear and again i think this says a lot about maybe where arsenal are as a fan base james only has that one as one nil so i think even he thinks this would be relatively close probably hoping for some performances from the Arsenal forwards. Um, Brentford, Nottingham Forest. Guys, Brentford, 19th in the form table, not playing well. And that seat for Thomas Frank is getting very, very hot. I would say to any directors, owners, board members, whatever, at Brentford, Thomas Frank's one of the reasons why you're as relevant as you are. Um, and I don't think firing him is going to be a good thing. Brentford, I've always thought, especially in terms of the quality of the team, um, this is, you know, this is a squad that could be back in the championship within a blink of an eye. The only reason they've been able to stay in the Premier League and do as well as they have is off the back of his hard work, the culture and the teamsmanship that he's created at that football club, making that new Brentford Community Stadium this kind of hub for them to for them to win. Um, Nottingham Forest, Nuno Espirito Santo, new manager bounce, lots of talent at his disposal as well. I think that will benefit a manager like him to, to, to play a little more aggressively. He does have a way of playing and a clear strategy that he goes into football games with. And I still think even at Brentford, Nottingham Forest will be able to pull off the 1-0. James, I'm sure, is looking at two teams not playing brilliantly and thinking, maybe this is my 0-0 of the week. I'm sure that's his thought process. The one thing I will say, and again, I don't have this in front of me, didn't do my research. I, is Ivan Tony back? I'm not sure if he is. I think he might be, but I'm unsure. Be very interesting to see how, how he plays. Um, Sheffield United versus West Ham. Um, James has Sheffield United pulling this one off. Uh, Sheffield United 18th in the form table, way down there just generally in the league as well. Uh, at home, West Ham come in. West Ham, who are playing fantastically well, fifth in the form table as of late, playing playing some really, really nice stuff. Um, look, I don't think this will be easy, but I think with James Ward-Prowse delivery and with what West Ham can 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 offer, I, I want to say they're without Lucas Paqueta and maybe with a couple of injuries, I think they are struggling a little bit, but I do think that West Ham are going to have enough at Bramall Lane to just pull this off. This Sheffield United team are no good. Um, you know, fingers crossed they'll go down. I'm, I'm not a big fan of them being in the league just generally. I don't think they 
offer anything really there's not much entertainment or excitement that, that i personally get from them so i just think west ham will be able to be able to pull this off will it be super convincing no but i do think they'll be able to get the job done one nil away from home um james has sheffield united winning this one um again i don't know whether it's desperation i don't know it's whether the fact that you know west ham may be missing a couple of players but james has sheffield united pulling this one off be interesting to see how that one plays out Bournemouth versus Liverpool. I did mention Man United Spurs might be kind of game of the week in terms of hype and uh, and just general viewership. Guys, Bournemouth Liverpool, this is number one versus number two in the form table. So this is the two best teams in the league over the last six games coming up against one another. Um no Mo Salah. Big kind of headline point here. No Mo Salah. That makes a huge difference to the way that this Liverpool team are going to operate generally. Also makes a huge difference in how Bournemouth are going to match up and play against uh, against this Liverpool team as well. What I will say is it does kind of... I'm excited purely from a standpoint of, guys, Mo Salah is not getting any younger. He's not getting any faster. Um, and Mo Salah is the, the type of player who, when you move on from, there's going to be this big kind of gap that needs to be filled. Now, Liverpool, there's some optimism around some of their players. Yota, if he can stay fit, Luis Diaz... You know, they have some nice players. Cody Gakpo, obviously Darwin Nunez can pull out into wide positions as well. But we do need to, at some point, get a sense of what this Liverpool team are going to look like um, without Mo Salah in it. Now is kind of a perfect example to do that. Although, going to Iriola's Bournemouth team in the way that they're playing at the moment is potentially going to be tricky. Dom Solanke, right, might have want to make a point here and just say, hey, why did you let me go? What have you done? What have you done here? I think it's going to be 1-1. I think they're going to miss Mo Salah, but I still think they're going to be very, very dangerous. James has Liverpool just blagging it out in a 2-1 victory. Um, Final game of the week, uh, Brighton versus Wolverhampton Wanderers. Um, Wow, completely split here for, for, for me and James. I think James probably saw some of the recent Brighton performances and the attacking football that he saw from them and thought, especially at home, maybe they'll be able to get out this Wolves team. But I'll be honest with you, I still think this Wolverhampton team are something to, you know, to, to you know, a force to be reckoned with. Uh, they're third in the form table at the moment. Um, you know, uh, 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 He Chan, uh, I forget, forget his full uh, his full name, but he he's strong, very, very strong. Pedro Neto, the likes of these guys, still there. And again, it's always been the case with this Wolves team. Putting the pieces together has always been the tricky thing. The talent is undeniable, but can the, the pieces be put together? And with Brighton as well, a couple of recent additions. Um, I believe the kid from from Boca Juniors, football manager fans will will, will, will know. Another redhead in the Premier League is what we like to see as well. Um, but maybe Brighton will have a little bit of upside and a little bit of motivation to try and get a result. Regardless, I think there are going to be a lot of goals in this game. Uh, and I'm going to stick with my 3-2 to Wolves, just being able to pull something off, continuing their kind of hot streak that, that they've got here also he might not he chan might not be available because of the asian cup as well so that's something to consider too um james has a relatively convincing brighton win i'd assume there's probably a pretty early goal in there and brighton really establishing themselves at home um what do you guys think more importantly, forget what I think, forget what James thinks. You know, we're, we're batting about 500 at the moment anyway. But guys, this is difficult. Predicting the Premier League this year has not been easy. Put your predictions down below so we can see them. We don't want to hear that you got them all right after the fact. We need to see them in the comment section before. Drop a like on the video as well if you do like what you've seen. While you're down there, again, I feel like I mention it a lot, but if we are seven subscribers away and you're not subscribed, it would make a hell of a lot of difference to us if you could just hit that subscribe button turn the bell on as well and until next time i would say me and james but just me we'll see you next time